have a doctor. So at least one person thought it was a problem. And it was given an answer in this web page, I didn't, I didn't put it, it's from NASA. Okay, so then two more solutions. I'm gonna have two scenarios, a single moving nebula or a moving star is the moving atmosphere. I'm gonna use this as the, as the time of proof that I can use. It's a simple problem, so, uh, okay, then analysis classical, uh, we're gonna the problem with relativity and this web one solution. And the consequences, this is the only positive part. Okay, uh, uh, I'm gonna discuss some little problem of classical, relativity, and quantum mechanics. And the conclusion is that the classical theory wins. Okay? So this is one more black spot for relativity theory. Uh, so that's the negative side. The positive side is this uh, diffraction experiment because I was doing this last year, remember? This Brazilian experiment, they tried to prove the motion of the Earth by a diffraction experiment. And they didn't give no theory. So I think I have the theory, but I couldn't replicate the experiment. They have the experiment, they do not have the theory. So, okay, so I'm gonna treat you like my students. I'm gonna support the people So don't be insulted because you know what an absorption line is. But anyway, in astronomy, you have three kinds of spectra. When you have a very dense body and you pass through a green prism, you get a continuous spectrum, a rainbow. If you have just a cloud of gas emitting uh, enough energy, you're gonna have discrete emission lines. But if you have a dense object passing through a, a uh, colder cloud of gas, this is gonna act like an absorption filter. So then you get the rainbow and the absorption lines. Whoa. This is the absorption spectrum, okay? And this was discovered in morning by Fraunhofer, in 1814. Here's Newton, his famous experiment with prism. He projected on a screen. But Fraunhofer, uh, he was a gifted young fellow. He had a terrible acid, almost died. But the uh, Maximilian, the, the emperor of Austria, gave him money. And he used money for more experiments. So voila, he discovered this in 1814. Because instead of projecting the Rainbow to the screen, he looked directly to this to this rainbow. That's dangerous too. So he saw a rainbow and this superposed absorption lines. So these are all from offer lines for obvious reasons. Okay, that's what historical is. So what is going on here? Here's the sun, here's the atmosphere. Sorry about it looks like a fried egg. That's not my intention. The sun, for example, emits 656. I'm going to use a specific case because this is very well known in astronomy. This is the signature of Hodgson. When Everton jumped from the third to the second level, it emits 656 nanometers, a red line. Okay, suppose that the atmosphere has Hodgson. So this colder Hodgson can absorb the 656. So this is absorbed. So it produces a dark line at that precise wavelength. And it has more or other more lines, but this you know give my example. So this is what Frank Hoffer found, and there's no explanation. By the way, this line is not totally absent of light. What happens is that the atom absorption then immediately remits in all directions. So the light that goes through is minimal, but some goes through, but most of it is scattered. Okay? So that's why it appears dark. Let me let me read it. The sun emits a rainbow spectrum, then hydrogen atoms in the solar atmosphere, which are the red dots here. Absorb the Hodge alpha line, that's the name, 656 nanometers, which appears as a Fraunhofer dark line in the outer spectrum of Earth, exactly at that wavelength. In reality, the H atoms re emit the 656 radiation in all directions, thus weakening the intensity that reaches Earth. So we call it an absorption line. Uh, a little bit of the background of the Doppler effect, which is not related to this, but it's going to happen. This is the classical equation that that uh, refers to the emission velocity and the detector velocity. And the, you know, the plus minus signs, depending if they come together or they separate. If you have, uh, if this is for uh, line of sight coinciding with the motion, if there is an inclination, they have to introduce the cosine of the line, okay? But you see, I didn't put the plus minus sign here because with this convention, when you are moving away from the light, you're gonna increase the wavelength without need to refer to any detector. And this is very important. Doppler effect doesn't need a meter and detector. You can have a Doppler effect just with a meter. If the meter goes in opposite direction to the light, 
Then the angle is 180. You put 180, you get minus minus, so it's plus. So you increase the wavelength when you're going away. Okay? And the same thing happens with the emitter, with the deflector equation. So this summarizes everything better than this. Now, I want to split this equation in the two steps, because when you demonstrate the Doppler equation, you have to go into steps in the classical theory. So this is the uh, emitter equation, and this is the detector. And it appears on the top and on the bottom. Of course, when you combine them, this cancels, and then you end up with this single equation in terms of the velocity of the emitter and the detector. Of course, I put here this case, so minus minus is plus here, minus minus is plus, so, if the emitter velocity and the detector velocity are different, you're going to get a lambda prime different from lambda zero. But if these two velocities are equal, which is the case of moving together, then you don't get any change of wavelength. You go back to the original natural wavelength, the emitted wavelength, lambda zero. Is that clear? Uh, I put it in this. It's very important that we understand that the Doppler effect has two independent moments, the emission and the detection. When you prove it, you have to proceed that way. Okay, in the next one, I did the same thing for the relativity formula. It looks very much the same, but it's only relative velocity between the emitter and detector. It's a single entity that appears here and here with the signs interchanged. Okay? Um, so that's what it is. Um, or you, you can just... Uh, uh, take out the speed of light and it becomes like that. You can also put the direction of sign in case there's no alignment. It's the same as classical theory, it's the same meaning. And this can be rewritten with the gamma factor in front, it's exactly the same equation. Okay? You can do the algebra, it's the same. With the, with the cosine uh, direction angle here. Okay? You see there are different uh, signs, so it, it's not unity. It's, even if you, uh, there's only one relative velocity, velocity, it will have some value. The only way that relativity gives you a zero value is if this relative velocity is zero. Because then you get C or C is unity. Okay? And that's what relativity says. If one thing is moving together with another one, there's no Doppler effect. Of course, the classical theory says, oh, there's a Doppler from the source and a Doppler with the detector that cancel each other. It's a very different thing to say that the two Dopplers cancel than to say that there's no Doppler. This is the two series that uh, Erickson was mentioning. Okay. Anyway, keep going now. This is just the theory. This is how they uh, detect something moving away from us. I'm going to concentrate exactly on this problem. The 656 line is going to go to 670 if the source is moving away from us at 6400 okay? This is a cluster of distant galaxies. And of course, all the other lines are going to shift also. But I'm going to concentrate on the 670, so please keep this lines in mind, okay? So what is the problem? Okay, uh, this is, I'm gonna summarize again this, the whole thing. Astronomers use the Doppler effect to tell the velocity of stars in a lunar galaxy set. They do so by usually considering absorption from half spectral lines, which appear as dark lines against a continuous range. In other words, all these spectral uh, from moving stars are absorption lines. I have never seen an emission spectrum, okay? Which is very interesting. Then, this happens when the light from a star is absorbed by its own atmosphere. So, we have the emitter, this is star, the detector is the atmosphere, and they're moving together to us or away from us. So, there's no relative motion between the emitter and the detector. Okay? Can you see the problem there? Keep on. So, the problem is how can a dark line absence of light energy be shifted in any way, either to the red or to the blue? An emission line can be Doppler shifted, but an absorbed line is the absence of light. How can it be Doppler shifted? Okay. Now, at this point, uh, it's one more, I think. Okay, stop it there. Because I was presenting this to my brother. <coughs> he immediately gave this solution. So I'm going to give you one second or two. First, do you see a problem or not? You don't see no solutions. But is there any solution that occurs to you? Uh, uh, how can you have an absorption line moving? Say to the to the right. Yes. Everything moves. Everything scales. Uh, the frequency scales. The wavelength scales. So so it's it, the whole spectrum scales. All the all the all the all the emitted light goes up, and what and the hole gets blows up also. 